real estate and a lot of conversation around how the cycle which started 2 years ago is actually a multi year cycle and there is consolidation of players etc uh, which probably holds true but does the rising interest rate or elevated rates even if it doesn't rise too much but if it's elevated does it kind of put a spanner in the wheels or would you believe both real estate and real estate ancillaries would continue to benefit no so clearly uh, some amount of impact will be felt but today i feel uh, uh, the we are at a stage where uh, the bulk of the investment demand is out of the real estate market it is more or less consumption demand in the previous cycle the component of investment demand was probably 80% and consumption demand was 20% today it is probably the reverse uh, uh, consumption demand is 80 90% and maybe 10 20% is investment demand so investment demand is the one which is more sensitive to this uh, uh, real estate uh, sorry to the interest rate going up the consumption demand yes there will be an impact as but as long as see what has happened is for 7 8 years the wages kept going up the supply kept coming down uh so the affordability had reached a very very attractive level so that some amount of affordability uh now it is not so that the prices have gone through the roof okay most of the real estate uh, companies are doing well because the volumes have picked up it is less because mm-hmm. of the prices have picked up prices have picked up probably in a specific project where bulk of the sale has happened you know where only last 5 10% of the inventory is left there that is where some amount of pricing power to the developer is coming back but if a new project is launched and if there is enough supply in the area prices are not going up but uh, if a good product is being offered to the market there is a demand for it people are coming and buying so whether it was work from home which made people realize that they need bigger houses or they need to stay in a place from where they can work also uh, or whether it was the incentives that grow in the short run which was provided by the state governments in terms of stamp duty concessions and all uh the demand has stayed up now good four six quarters after those concessions have also gone gone away and while those covid uh, c- concerns have also gone away so m- demand has sustained and the uh, actually the festive season is up ahead of us and i believe even for real estate this festive season will be a good one so i don't think uh, so uh, for us the repo rate has probably gone from 4% to 5.5% maybe it will go till 6% also but the uh, the home loan rate has probably it had probably gone down to 6.5% today is probably at uh, 7.5% so you know you're not going to uh, postpone your uh, decision to buy a house because you're paying 1% more emi so it is still within the range of uh, see we have seen interest rates so high in our uh, life in the uh, earlier stages that this is this does not feel high at all we have always been used to it you know i'll just give you a perspective i was in us 3 months back over there the home loan rates have gone from 2% to 6% that that's a real is a, pinch that, that is something that pinches for us it has gone from 6.5% to 7.5 even if it is 8% we have lived in that kind of an interest rate scenario 8% still feels very very attractive uh, for anybody who is buying home so i don't think interest rates are going to have so much of an impact though real estate stocks are interest rate sensitive that way yeah. some amount of valuation impact can happen uh in the real estate stocks because of this got it what about ancillaries though because they have enjoyed a really good momentum the last couple of years ravi some of the good ones are again priced very punchy uh, uh you may have existing investments which is fine for people if you are to put deploy fresh money would you find opportunities in the real estate ancillary space absolutely i think uh, real estate okay. ancillary is uh, is a far better way to play the real estate team than the real estate developers uh purely because the industry structures are better over there there is a multiple tailwind in terms of uh, organized uh, unorganized becoming organized so mm. the larger and the stronger guys are gaining more more uh, more market share so that is leading to consolidation that is leading to some amount of uh pricing power being better than the so the your returns are going to depend on the absolute size of the industry how much it is growing what is the uh structure of the industry and uh, which player you have uh, bought into so from that point of view see no one real estate player can ever be a leader even the leader will never have more than 5 7% of the entire real estate market while it is possible that in a uh, you know building material space one particular player can have 30 40 50% kind of a market share so and that kind of a market share 
gives you dominance in the market, uh, which uh, a real estate developer will never have. So from that point of view, the industry structure is far better in building materials than the real estate developer. But so, and, uh, yeah. and valuation is okay for you to put in fresh money. Yeah. So in fact, valuations have corrected uh, recently uh, because a lot of that was driven by the raw material price increase. And now raw material prices have kind of a dual effect. Uh, it leads to increase in their sales uh, because they sell on a fixed EBITDA margin. And, and I, when I say fixed, it is not the percentage margin I'm talking about. Uh, let's say, for example, PVC, if I were to take PVC is today available at, uh, let's say, 100 rupees a kilo. I'm just giving a rough, rough example. If the price goes from 100 rupees a kilo to 120 rupees, it leads to an inflation in the uh, sales. At the same time, the margin is compressed because you're still making 10 rupees uh, just an example, 10 rupees per uh, what you are making on 100, now making 10 rupees on 120. 120. So your absolute EBITDA still remains the same, but as a percentage, it has gone down. Now in a falling uh, scenario, when the 120 comes back to 100, uh, instead of 10, you are going to make 10 rupees on 100 now. So your margins uh, uh, optically look like they're expanding, but what is happening is actually it's your sales that is compressing. So, so now we are in a scenario where some of these raw material prices are actually coming back uh, down. And they will stabilize somewhere around here and the volumes will pick up. So now the ensuing growth will be more volume led rather than price led, which was the case earlier, which is a far more sustainable thing.